welcome to this morning's event and uh, thank you for the invitation to speak this morning. Uh, my name is Paul Dodd uh, and I work with Scottish Futures Trust and this morning I, I was keen uh, to give you an overview of the, uh, the Scottish journey towards uh, the implementation of BIM Level 2. <coughs> I, uh, I myself work within the Scottish BIM Delivery Group um, with other colleagues within Scottish Futures Trust so keen to share where we are with that journey and, and the lessons that we've learned to date and going forward. So um, with the time we have this morning, I, I was keen to just give you a bit more information about Scottish Futures Trust and, and our role, um, the remit that we're working to in terms of delivering BIM. Um, our response to that with the plan, we've developed our BIM implementation plan for the public sector within Scotland and, and our approach to that. So, so that's what I'm keen to get across today and happy, as Dan said, to take questions at the end. So um, a bit about Scottish Futures Trust. Um, Scottish Futures Trust, we, we are an independent company established by the Scottish Government uh, and our role is to support in the delivery of infrastructure programmes across Scotland. And those programmes range across a number of areas or sectors. Um, from uh, SFT Green, which is the environmental agenda, uh, digital uh, is another piece, um, build, SFT build is new primary healthcare and schools, so we support uh, procuring authorities and delivering those programmes, um, and also the asset management, SFT play, so that's looking at existing uh, building stock. So the point there really is that we look at infrastructure across its whole asset life cycle and support procuring authorities with that, and we'll come back to that point later on. Again, very quickly, some of the work we get involved with. So we've recently uh, published a report around the, uh, the, the need and the benefits of improving digital uh, 4G technology across Scotland, the economic impact of that. Um, we've developed our um, street lighting toolkit. That's to support authorities around a spend to save initiative, LED lighting and the long term savings around that. And our work is kind of encapsulated within a benefit statement per annum. So we, we demonstrate our interventions and, and the savings that we've leveraged across that, uh, across programmes across the country. <clears throat> and, and one of our larger programmes is the Hub programme, which is a um, procurement programme, a national procurement programme across Scotland. Um, you'll see it's, it's 1.4 billion and it's uh, around community infrastructure and the procurement of development part five development partners across Scotland. And the role of those development partners is to uh, support procuring authorities with the delivery of schools and primary healthcare facilities. So, so that's one of our, our larger programmes. And with, within our work, some of, the, some of the interventions we do or to support those programmes is uh, developing reference designs. Um, this is, this is uh, our primary healthcare centre that's been built at the moment. So it's running that, uh, running design competitions, trying to drive better value, support, and, and share best practice across procuring authorities across Scotland. Um, and this is a recently completed primary school, Lairdsland Primary School. Again, we, we ran a design competition, and these reference designs are scalable. So um, the intention is that authorities can take this and, 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 and use it within their own solutions across, uh, across Scotland. So, that was a bit about ourselves as an organisation, and I suppose within BIM, it, it, there's a lot of linkages with what BIM's about and, and the benefits of BIM uh, with, with, with Scottish Futures Trust work. But I'd first like to talk about the term, the term BIM. And um, when, we, when we started our own journey, which I'll come on to, there was, I suppose where we, where we are with the terminology is, we're keen to emphasise this management piece, building information management, and getting the, the building blocks, the foundation of BIM correct. The modelling is a key part of it, but um, as part of our training and upskilling, um, it, it's emphasising that management piece across the delivery of uh, new projects. So, continuing that theme with this whole life approach, um, and where we see BIM sit, sitting with that, um, you have, with any project, you have a need to invest, you have an asset life cycle, you have operation and disposal. And I suppose our view is that 
BIN offers, and the fundamental point of BIM is, is improve, improving the management of information within projects. And, and if those building blocks are there, then that gives the opportunity to start to leverage that information more effectively. And I know the room will be aware of, of the principles of it, but the point we're making there is, is making it proportionate to projects, I suppose, in terms of our own implementation and how well authorities leverage that information on a project by project basis. And, and however you leverage that information, that will derive benefits. And the key objective is to drive efficiencies within the whole life approach of, uh, of new projects. So, so that's the, the kind of real synergies with our work and, and BIM itself. So what I'd like to move on to is our involvement within the BIM implementation and, and our remit with, with, with that. So back in 2013, the Scottish Government published um, the Review of Scottish Public Sector Procurement and Construction. Not very catchy, but that's what it was. Um, and the review basically looked at how public procurement and construction could improve. Um, and it made 66 recommendations around that. And that ranged from simplifying the PKQ process, um, community benefits within construction. But five of the recommendations were in regards to BIN. And what you'll see up there is the overarching recommendation the review made. <clears throat> and it's, it's a very strong starting point for our work. And, and in essence, endorsed by Scottish ministers, it set out that, um, in essence, where appropriate projects across the public sector adopt the BIM Level 2 by April 2017. So we, as a group, the Scottish BIM Delivery Group are tasked with delivering that objective, so supporting the public sector in, in achieving that recommendation. The review also identified a number of themes around BIM, and themes we're probably, we are familiar with, but the principles are that BIM obviously promotes a more collaborative approach. Um, they also identify the challenges in implementing BIM. But the kind of summation of that was that the challenges were outweighed by the, the whole life savings that, that BIM could re uh, present to the public sector. So we as a group, the Scottish BIM Delivery Group, have a really strong basis to uh, support and develop our own BIM implementation plan. But we, we're also conscious that uh, that can't be our only, it can't be standalone. And there is a need to work on and develop tools to support that benefits case around BIM. So there's three key drivers in our view. <coughs> Firstly, we have the Scottish Government's endorsement, working on the benefits of BIM to support procurers, and also the, this national and international momentum, not just within the public sector, but within industry and the, and the piece about um, maintaining competitive within markets. As part of our uh, plan, we've uh, commissioned the BIM 2050 group to do a research piece on um, uptake across uh, internationally around BIM. And if I, if I move this on, this is quite an interesting video. This is New Zealand, uh, Wellington in New Zealand. Um, they suffered um, a significant earthquake and they're on their own BIM journey with the view um, to, 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 to improve that data collection across sectors, utilities, um, et cetera, for that resilience piece and also the wider benefits around public sector, uh, improving public sector value. So they've started their own BIM journey um, and they've already started to look at how they uh, leverage that information um, in a better way to improve uh, decisions around infrastructure investment. And if I carry that forward. So the video is just representing some of the work they're up to about, and that, that's about traffic, bear with me. So they're, so they're using this information more effectively to, to drive efficiencies around uh, infrastructure and virtual, um, virtual reality around looking for utilities in the road. Um, so, so, so just another example of, of other uh, countries that are, that are already on that journey, and that's something we're looking to map. For us, that vision of collectively leaving the information, it, it is, is, we have to be, remain mindful of it 
but where we are now is, is the first step on that road, which is achieving, which is our BIM implementation plan, and that's one step in a wider and longer journey around the digital built written agenda and getting to level three. But as we, as, as we touch on, it's about getting the foundations right and, and, and getting the principles of, of BIM collaborative working correct to, to build on that for, for longer term objectives. So, um, we need to touch on uh, <clears throat> our response to the recommendations of the review. And that response involved the development of the BIM implementation plan for Scotland. Um, we published it back in September 2015. The plan basically set out a roadmap of supporting the public sector to get them ready for adopting BIM beyond April 2017. And the plan set, uh, set out a number of things, including interventions such as developing guidance, pathfinder projects, training and research. So a lot of synergies with some of the initial ideas um, uh, that Alan was touching on earlier. The plan itself, um, we've split into five horizons, we've called them. And basically, they're milestones within our journey up until April 2017. The first horizon was the, uh, the defining the mandate and the objectives, which we completed last year. The, the second horizon is about mobilisation, so that's getting the governance, the communication, the training in place. And horizon three and four are probably the real bulk of our, our work, which we're in the midst of, and that is uh, developing Pathfinder projects and, and capturing the research from the Pathfinders, and also developing uh, Scottish BIM guidance as well. The final horizon is around the launch of BIM and, and, and gaining and maintaining that momentum up until April 2017. So what does that look like in terms of timing? So um, the, the red dash line there is, is obviously where we are just now. Um, we've, we've completed horizon one, uh, as I touched on, we completed horizon two, and, and we're really in the heart of, of our work at the moment, which is the pathfinders and developing that, that Scottish BIM guidance, which we'll touch on in a bit more detail. And governance. As part of the, the plan, we, we set out the, the following governance arrangements. Um, again, lots of synergies with, with what Alan put up at the start of, of today. Um, and just to run you through what that looks like and how we manage, and I suppose it's, it's managing an effective collaboration piece around our, the BIM journey. So, we have the Scottish BIM Delivery Group there, which I sit in. Um, they are responsible for the horizons, which we touched on earlier. They are, and they report straight into Scottish Government's own delivery group around the review of the wider recommendations of the report I touched on. And then to the left of that group, we have this consultation and, and working groups. Um, on the top left, we have what we've termed the BIM Public Sectors Buyers Group. So that's uh, bringing together all the key procurers in um, transport, prisons, health, local authorities to share our work and receive feedback from them about our work and, and vice versa. The, the next group is the BIM Supplier Group and that's in essence industry. Um, we have a, an industry council and we're, we're using them to, to lead in that supplier group. And represented on that group is the, the RICS, the Royal Institute of Architects for Scotland, so key organisations um, that we can engage with around them. And then the, the, the last working group there on the left is the BIM for Academia group. Um, and a, a really interesting group insofar as we had our second meeting uh, um, on was it yesterday, the day before, and um, their objective is to start thinking about and shaping the curriculum and, and thinking about that now ahead of the skills need um, once BIM uh, is implemented. So some really interesting thinking about that, um, bringing together universities, colleges, schools, and the SQA, the Scottish Qualification Authority. So, so really uh, interesting debate there about what that looks like going forward. And all these groups then sit and are represented on our BIM industry forum. And that's really to allow suppliers to have the engagement with academia and vice versa, just to, to again, to share ideas and, and allow us as a delivery group to share our work and our approach and, and uh, receive feedback in terms of our own work. 
Um, the last group probably to mention is the Pathfinder Delivery Group. Um, we, we brought on Glasgow Caledonian University, who are part of that group, to monitor a number of uh, Pathfinder projects, which we'll come on to. So I suppose for, for, for us, kind of a key aspect of the governance arrangement was to was to, to offer a sense of leadership around the BIM agenda within Scotland, um, offer the opportunity for collaboration, and also the clarity of purpose. And, and by that I mean maintaining effective communications that this is real, there is a drive, ministers have endorsed it, and, and there is a push and resources um, to, to deliver that agenda. So one of the other work streams, uh, Horizon 3, has been Pathfinder projects. Um, so as I mentioned, we have Glasgow Caledonian University who was brought on board to do the research around that. And we have three projects at the moment. Um, as you will expect, um, time is not on our side to do from a start to finish analysis. Um, so our approach around the Pathfinders is sitting down with teams who are adopting BIM Level 2, <coughs> understanding where they are in that journey and then identifying parts to measure performance and benefits. So one of the projects we have is Marshall Square, which is in Aberdeen, quite a large joint venture between the council and developer, um, which is ongoing, it's on site at the moment. Um, a really interesting one we feel is we're working with Historic Environment Scotland, and they've got the agenda to look at their existing asset or existing portfolio and develop asset information models for those. And they've started a project which is the palace in Edinburgh Castle. So there's a scanning exercise going on and then building the data around that model. So we're working with them, which is really interesting. And then finally, we're working with NHS Scotland, um, who are doing a new build national pain, pain centre. So we're, we're, we're developing these at the moment, measuring outcomes, and then that will inform our guidance going <coughs> forward. So that's. That's where we are in terms of our implementation plan. That's what we've published to, to industry. Um, we are continuing our governance uh, arrangements, meetings quarterly with, with the various subgroups. And I suppose the other piece around this is, is our approach. So in terms of our outcomes, where are we going and what will that look like come April? So our, our current approach, and, and this has been developed over the last six months, is that Taking you back to the recommendation within the review, it said where appropriate. And um, I think it leads to this point about being proportionate in terms of BIM and BIM being able to demonstrate the benefits. So we're developing three tools at the moment, and they're going to ask, uh, answer three questions. So what we're looking to develop and support procuring authorities is when should I use BIM? And we've, we've developed an in consultation with a BIM grading tool. And that'll be an online portal that an authority can go in, input project information, and it'll articulate the, the building blocks of BIM, and then the system will suggest, provide the feedback to the procurer as to what level of BIM should be adopted. So that, that's a tool to answer the when beyond April. The why, so beyond the recommendations of the review, um, we want to support authorities have those conversations internally around the benefits. And in thinking about the benefits early, being able to monitor those through the development of a project. So we've developed a BIM, recently we're in consultation, we've de uh, developed a benefits tool where um, it provides some quantitative analysis of the benefits based on some project information. And then the final part is the how, and that's our Scottish BIM guidance that we're developing. Now, I may add one of our approaches to that is not to reinvent the wheel. Um, we, we, we understand there's lots of good stuff out there, there's lots of principles in place, the PAS, the, the British Standards, uh, MBS2, there's lots of good stuff out there. So it's leveraging that and, and, and making it specific to the Scottish uh, construction industry is probably a key part. And we also see that as being a process potentially. Authorities might have already made a decision to, to adopt them and jump straight to the how. For others, they might want to go through this methodical process of asking the when and the why. Um, just to give you a bit of understanding around the grading tool, so 
It's a stepped approach that sits behind this online portal. And we've, we've, we're currently in consultation, but the key principles of the grading tool is that projects above 4.3 million real due threshold would lean towards bin level two. But that's only if it's supported by other key parts to, to the building blocks of, of, of using bin, multidisciplinary design teams, the use and need for asset information in the operational phase. So um, it is an informed questionnaire. We are in consultation and, and we are refining it uh, through that consultation, but that just gives you a feel for what that looks like. Touching quickly on the benefits too. Um, <clears throat> the principles of this is um, we've developed a number of quantitative benefits that we can define calculations against to generate some monetary benefits. And then we've got some qualitative benefits, stuff that is harder to quantify. And what the system does is it has predetermined benefits with calculations. Those calculations will be set against the project value. And there'll be a list of assumptions there. And the user would go in, they would insert the project value, project duration. And then the key part to this is then the user as well can, can give a likelihood of delivering that benefit. So there's a level of self-assessment around whether they'll deliver the benefits within the project. Uh, to offer a level of control back to the procurer. And in doing that, the current draft is that it would deliver a, generate a scorecard, a one-page scorecard, which would summarise <coughs> the, 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 the quantitative and qualitative benefits of been within that project. Um, mm -hmm. And it would give a monetary value. Kind of, that, that kind of summarises it. The, the scorecard also identifies any investment if, if the procurer wants to include that. So, and it provides a range, because we're at early business case stage, so there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of things still to put in place, but it offers the procurer an idea of the benefits and, and offering them the support with those discussions. Um, the last piece is the how, and uh, we, we're developing the Scottish BIM guidance at the moment. Um, I suppose the, the key part of that is developing employers' information requirements, as part of our role, is developing informed, proportionate, and considered employers' information requirements for procurers. The, what we're finding across our BIM public sector's buyers group is, is one size is not fit all, and from transport to water, whatever it may be. So we're, we're, we're supporting them developing templates so that when, beyond April, industry is, is, is getting presented with them, with consistency of approach, and also, uh, yeah, there's a proportionate approach to, to those requirements that have been asked for. So, in summary, some of the kind of our, our key our key drivers in terms of our work is is this proportionality, um, making it user friendly, simplifying the language, efficient, and, and we hope innovative in ways. Um, and we, as you'll see, we're only. We're only halfway through our journey. Um, but some of the other lessons that we, we've already learned, and I'm sure we'll learn more, uh, is such things like keeping it simple. Um, sometimes the, the acronyms can become a barrier to organisations who want to take up them. Uh, it's, it's fundamental information management, and then it's leveraging that information effectively. The, uh, the piece around not reinventing the wheel, using what's there, um, trying to, to make it efficient as possible. Um, I think the other piece is one of the quality benefits we, we, we touch on is improving outcomes. So um, trying to link them with the outcomes, be it uh, educational attainment, what, what, what's the investment for, what's the investment trying to do, and thinking and challenging ourselves about how we demonstrate that within projects. One of the challenges is, 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 is supply chain and the readiness of supply chain and how we address that. And we're working quite hard, very hard, with the BIM supplier group about sharing that knowledge and best practice. But there are challenges there we have to address. Good communication plan. Um, I think both industry and public sector need to know the, the certainty of purpose I touched on earlier, that, that we are working towards this. And, and, and new projects beyond April, you will see BIM requirements 
and to, to, to start thinking about their own journeys. And finally, one size does not fit all, so thinking about uh, making it specific to key procurers. And, and this goes back to this EIR piece that we're, we're working quite hard, hard on. So, in summary, we, the, the, the BIM Delivery Group, are on our journey. Um, we, we, we've set out this roadmap to get us to April 2017. Um, it's, it's not without its challenges, but we, we have a strategy there that we think will we'll offer support to the public sector and, and industry around that BIM implementation. Um, but what we found very quickly is that um, we're, we're definitely not alone. Um, that there is, there is huge communities uh, out there that are, that are on this journey. Um, some are just joining the journey as we speak. Um, some are, the pace of some organisations is, is far greater than others. Some are investing quite heavily, some are being a bit more conservative. But, but the momentum is in one direction. And we hope through the reviews, recommendations in our work that people will know at least what the, the first destination in the road is in terms of, of BIM Level 2 in April 2017. Um, and I think part of our success is trying to support these organisations, both procurers and uh, in the wider industry, in, in, in that knowledge sharing piece uh, as well. So thank you for listening. Um, thank you very much, Paul. It's very interesting. Um, do we have any questions from the floor for Paul? We're just going to transfer um, laptops here as we're speaking. Uh, one, one observation I would make myself is that um, in Scotland, it's as you've explained, it's going to be largely driven from government, central government down. You're now putting in infrastructure to deal with that. And uh, I think the challenge we have here is uh, getting momentum is that there's probably a demand for BIM uh, in terms of process and, and efficiencies in the construction uh, sector. But it's, um, well, it's a demand, there's no need because it's not driven from the government down. And a lot of the discussions we've had with Ralph at subcommittee meetings in the RAI is that, <clears throat> is that first of all, there was no economy to demand that anybody could invest in, in BIM and free software for the last X amount of years. Now there is an economy uh, that there's no no demand for, for BIM amongst clients. It's not driven from the top down. Now obviously Alan's presentation earlier in terms of this national committee is going to try and put in an infrastructure and, and some process whereby people can see the benefits. So I don't have any thoughts on that, how it's actually going to operate in Scotland and how the, 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 the consultants in the private sector then view the whole process. Um, I think I think a big part of our work is to ensure that uh, we, we, we get the first step right, that, that procurers set out the requirements clearly and there's no ambiguity around it. And I think that'll be a big help for the supply side. Um, we also see the, the BIM execu execution plan, i.e. the contractor proposals as an opportunity to, to do that sense check around the art of the possible, I suppose, as well. Um, but um, we are we're using and relying quite heavily on the supplier group as well um, around uh, that piece um, in terms of getting suppliers um, on board with, with the journey where it's going to go. Yeah, no, I yeah. Okay, any, uh, any questions from the floor? Oh, yeah, I'm Daniel from uh, Autodesk Garden. There we go. Daniel from Autodesk Ireland. Nice to meet you. Hi. So uh, really interesting, uh, the journey that you've been on, and uh, it resonates uh, uh, really well with me. Uh, I guess the question that I'm asking is, obviously, we're, we're right a number of years behind where you guys are, uh, but there is m momentum starting to build, and there is a real collaborative effort to drive the mandate in Ireland. Um, and and I'm, I'm just wondering, are, as part of your remit, um, are you available to uh, you know, assist organisations in Ireland with influencing you know, the government policy and sharing uh, your success with your equivalents in the Irish government? 
Yes, yeah, we, we are keen to share um, even some of the resources we've developed already. So that's that we are keen to do that, and uh, um, we, we haven't reached success yet. There's a bit to go, but uh, yeah. yeah, we're we are here to a share our work and and have that two-way discussion, I suppose. Yeah, the journey you've been on is a journey that we're we're kind of going through. So rather than trying to reinvent everything, yeah. you know, you've got a proven methodology and process there. So I'll I'll plug into you offline. Let's say happily, happily. I think one one of the one of the other benefits was that um, a proportion of our supply chain within Scotland were already tuned into the UK agenda, which is in the next month. Um, so. Uh, uh, yeah, that's helped in terms of that momentum that was already there. As well. We have to acknowledge that. Yes, go ahead. <coughs> what, yeah, as, as, uh, as Simon Kill, architect, um, I just wanted to understand the difference, say, between the, the UK or the English uh, um, mandate uh, BIM yeah. plan and, <coughs> and the differences you've seen are observed in how Scotland will approach it because again in an Irish context we kind of look over the water and eventually we kind of you know get up and do something so I'm just interested to know what would you say would be the sort of three key kind of specific drivers you've picked up as differentiators to how uh, the UK uh, government have uh, adopted it because I think that we're talking April 16 and you're talking uh, I think it was March 2017. Yeah. So probably one thing I forgot to mention was we were very fortunate to have David Philp, um, who's part of the UK task group. He's the chair of our Scottish BIM delivery group. And um, as well as David being at the forefront of, of BIM implementation internationally, he, he's, he's also been part of the UK journey as well. So um, we've, the honest answer, we, we've used that learning to build on our approach, um, which has again been very useful uh, to our own implementation. Um, three things, I, I suppose um, the, the the grading tool and the benefits tool. If, if we get that right, I think that's we hope is quite an innovative approach and maybe builds on on work elsewhere. Um, and I'm thinking of a third, uh, but I, I think through David's through David's knowledge, I think that's a key piece in terms of uh, a light. I think the other point, important point, is aligning to to, to the UK in terms of the PAS and, and the British standard as well. So it's just striking a balance between that. Cool. Thank you very much again, Paul. That was an excellent presentation. So